All right, everybody, we're going to talk about rheumatologic eye emergencies, an exciting topic. Uh, fortunately for all of you, uh, there's really only two rheumatologic eye emergencies you got to have in the back of your mind that you need to be able to think about. Um, and so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about giant cell arteritis. That's going to be like 95% of our discussion here is giant cell arteritis. It's awful. It's, it sucks. It's a horrible disease. Uh, and then also scleritis at the end. I'll say a few words about scleritis. All right. So why do we care about giant cell arteritis? You can die from it. That's probably the worst thing. Uh, you can also go blind from it, like legit, no light perception. There's very few things that cause no light perception vision where literally you cannot see any light, no light whatsoever. And giant cell arteritis is one of them in both eyes. It can affect both eyes. It's actually very common to affect both eyes, one than the other. All right, so the, the classic symptoms for giant cell arteritis, a temporal headache, all right, jaw claudication. So the longer the patient's chewing, the more tired they get. It's kind of an achy jaw, not like a, a pain, like TMJ, you know, pain. It's just like an achiness to the jaw. Uh, scalp tenderness, you know, the classic teaching is it hurts when they brush their hair or you can touch. And you, if you touch on the patient's scalp, it, it'll feel a little bit tender to the patient. Um, uh, fever, fatigue, and also cranial nerve palsy. So in my other talk about cranial nerve palsies, we talked about this. Anybody over 60 with a cranial nerve palsy, you have to check for giant cell arteritis. All right, so the patient comes in. I couldn't see. So this is, uh, it's really, the history is very important when you're thinking about giant cell arteritis because what you're thinking about, what you're listening for is something, um, uh, is a, a, a typical presentation of amaurosis fujax. So uh, amaurosis, the patient, the classic uh, um, example is that the vision gradually went completely dark over the course of 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, totally dark, okay? And then after a couple minutes, it came gradually back, all right? So gradually dark, gradually back, all over the course of about five minutes, all right? So if it was 20 seconds, that's not amaurosis. If it was 30 minutes, that's not amaurosis. Anything between five to 10, 15 minutes, that's usually what people will describe, all right? And it's a gradual black, gradual back, okay? Um, that is your classic um, episode of amaurosis. And so on exam, what you're, you're listening for, on exam, uh, for someone with GS, giant cell arteritis, you're looking for evidence of an ischemic optic neuropathy because that's what's happening. You've lost blood flow to the optic nerve that's caused the vision to go, go black. Uh, and so you're looking for a relative afferent pupillary defect. I encourage you to go check out YouTube. There are examples, great videos showing an RAPD. It's such an, an important exam finding to be able to recognize in an emergency setting. And then if you looked at the optic nerve, you've got out your, I included this photo because this is a, a um, this would be the typical view you get uh, from, a, uh, from a direct ophthalmoscope. Um, and so what you would see is really pale, really swollen nerve. A pale, swollen nerve in someone over 60, you're thinking giant cell arteritis. You've got to make sure that's not what's going on. So the timeline, for this patient, 68 year old who comes in, lost vision, classic episode of amaurosis. It's they're having some scalp tenderness. They're tired all the time. All right, you get labs, ESR, CRP, very much elevated. Um, and so you start steroids. All right, here's the thing. If you start steroids, either IV steroids, which you can do very easily, I encourage you to do that in the emergency setting, um, or oral steroids. Once you start steroids, you are buying that patient a temporal artery biopsy. They have to be biopsied if you've done the steroids and they have to be biopsied within about 10 days, maybe two weeks at the most, because then the inflammation would start to go away and you're not, you could get a false negative biopsy. So the patient's got to be biopsied within about 10 days once you start steroids. Giant cell arteritis virtually non-existent under the age of 50. All right, don't even really think about it. It's, it's unbelievably rare that that would ever happen. Um, if you start steroids, again, you got to get a biopsy. 
uh, beware of cranial nerve palsies. All right, that is the rundown of giant cell arteritis. All right, scleritis, the other rheumatologic emergency you might run into. So here's the deal with scleritis. This is a classic appearance. It's you get this super deep, red, angry eye. All right. Sometimes the, the sclera actually it looks kind of purplish. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of purplish here. And that's because the sclera, whenever you have scleritis, the sclera can actually get thin. And what you're seeing is the ciliary body, the uvea tissue underneath inside the eye. That's really dangerous. That's scary. And with, with true scleritis, patients will be exquisitely tender. All right. Just barely touching their eyeball and make them jump out of their skin. There's in so much pain from a true anterior scleritis. All right. Contrast that with episcleritis. Episcleritis is much more common. All right. And it's never an emergency. Usually people don't really come in for an episcleritis. They'll, you'll just come straight to me. Um, but uh, the difference is the patient's pretty comfortable. Yeah, a little bit irritated, a little bit sore. Uh, uh, they have a little bit of redness, but you don't have that thinning, that really angry, red, violaceous uh, 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 color to that sclera. And then some patients will have, this is a severe thinning. Look at all this. You can see how thin that sclera is. This is very dangerous. A rare, a very small percentage of patients can have um, uh, basically a non-inflammatory thinning of their sclera called scleromalacia, which you see sometimes rarely with a rheumatoid arthritis. And so you're just looking for that thinning of the sclera, but what's gonna bring patients in to see you in the emergency department is the pain because it's very, very painful to have scleritis. And you gotta basically, every time you, when you have scleritis, you gotta treat that with steroids. It's gotta be oral or IV steroids. Uh, send them home with it, uh, have them see us, uh, you know, within a, a day or two. And then the mild, the episcleritis, you know, we treat that with NSAIDs, ibuprofen, um, you know, uh, it's a, usually a self-limiting disease. So typically you don't really have to do much of anything. That's it. Thanks. Thanks.